bloody a-hole for canceling my wedding because my family and my in-laws wouldn't shut up about it. And being called a bridezilla left and right about this and my fiancé is called a simp for apparently doing as I say, despite that being a mutual decision. My family and my fiancé's family have tried to have a say at our wedding in every aspect possible. How many guests we will invite, who we will invite, what kind of suit my fiancé will wear, what kind of wedding dress I'll wear, what kind of venue we will book, what kind of food we will have, what kind of music we will play, what song we will have our first dance to. Everything we've planned our families always judge, and aren't pleased to always have something negative to say. Planning our wedding has been more stressful and less fun for that reason. I feel like I can't have the wedding I want to have because they'll find a way to ruin it. At this point, I don't enjoy any of it and neither does my fiancé. We try to make our boundaries clear with our family several times, and they'd get mad and somehow got worse whenever we tried to set boundaries. So, my fiancé and I both decided we will not have our wedding, and we will just go to the courthouse with our two best friends as witnesses. And that's it. No parties, no venues, no receptions. Just us, with our dream dress slash suit and our two best friends. And after that, we'll book a restaurant to have some dinner with our ten closest friends. That's all. Our families are continuing with the guilt tripping. Even my sisters, who used to remain neutral and even supported me sometimes, are now saying I'm taking it too far. But I'm manipulating my fiancé about this too. They keep insulting us and telling us to change our decision. We demanded an apology from their behavior and that we might have our wedding. But they refused to see why they should apologize. We said we stand firm. Are we the a-holes? Edit. Many people are asking who's paying. Our parents are helping us a lot financially, but we are also paying. Our parents use the financial support as a way to control our decisions. We wouldn't stand for that. They shouldn't offer to pay if they couldn't respect that the final decisions would be our own. For example, my in-laws refused to pay for the dress I picked because it was beige, and not white. Our parents demanded we uninvite friends of ours to make room for relatives and friends of their own, and many other things. Now for the top comments. Not day home. We had our dream elopement. It was fantastic. Best decision ever. Dressed up how we wanted, had a photographer. It was great. The best wedding is having total control. Hate when families hold their contribution over your head. Either help or don't help, but do not dictate if you are going to help. Not stay home. Simple as, if they continue, maybe actually have your dream wedding, both of yours, and don't invite anyone who wants to take that away from you. That would mean no family at all, which right now doesn't seem like a bad idea. But I can't handle any more drama. That's why my fiancé and I decided to be low-key about it now. If I don't invite my parents and he doesn't invite his, then our extended families will side with our parents because they have the mindset that, no matter what parents do, they're your parents and you should respect them regardless. So they'd stand by our parents and not attend our wedding as a way to protest. Respect is not blind obedience. Their need to control and show off to friends is their first priority, and a wedding and its meaning secondary. Don't touch their money if it comes with veto authority. Have your private wedding and break bread with those who support you, not stay home. That's exactly what we are doing. There was no point in having a wedding if we couldn't enjoy even a bit of it. Not stay home. You are making the right decision. But just a piece of advice, throw out a dummy date for the courthouse wedding. Like, say, if you are getting married on Friday, June 6th, actually get married on Thursday, June 5th. Because your family sounds exactly like the kind of people who would crash the courthouse and cause drama. Next story. Am I the a-hole for keeping an inheritance from my ex-husband's homophobic family? I, 33 female, married my childhood best friend John, 33 male, when we were 22. I knew he was gay, and we decided to get married for several reasons taxes, convenience, to keep his family from finding out, etc. I got along with his family, who loved me. John had med school paid for by his family. I didn't have a job, and instead became a full-time caretaker for his maternal grandparents, who, when we first got married, were 85 at 87, and were dealing with multiple health problems. John's family supported us both financially through John's medical training. Once John got his MD and finished residency three years ago, he decided to come out to his parents. We got divorced, but we decided against telling the family that I knew all along. 
John's parents cut him off completely when he moved in with his boyfriend, basically disowning him. His grandparents weren't told about him being gay. Everyone was pretty much in agreement that it wasn't a good idea, as they were quite fragile physically and mentally at this point. But they knew he divorced. And whereas John used to come see his grandparents frequently, because his parents had disowned him, John decided to pretty much limit contact with his entire family and never really visited or called. On the other hand, I had been his grandparents' main caretaker for so long that I, one, didn't have any other career training to support myself, two, figured it would make sense for me to continue being their caretaker, as they were rapidly declining and didn't want them to adjust poorly to a lot of new changes. I moved into his grandparents' home with them. While I was angry at John's parents for their treatment of him, I still loved his grandparents who had always been kind to me. When they passed within a few weeks of each other, his grandfather ended up willing almost their entire estate to me, about 12 million in assets, while John and his mom each received about 50,000. John and I discussed it, and I felt it was fair that he received a higher proportion, and were both happy and comfortable with how we divided it. His parents, on the other hand, had expected to receive the bulk of the inheritance, and accused me of mistreating his grandparents and manipulating them into willing almost everything to me. Apparently, they had made some business decisions, assuming they would receive the money. They also argued that they would have gone ballistic if they knew John was using their money to fund his lifestyle. I honestly hadn't thought of their will at all when they passed. It had never come up, but I feel John deserves the money after the way his parents treated him. And John tells me I deserved to be taken care of after I spent more than a decade of my life caring for his grandparents. Are we the a-holes for keeping the inheritance when his parents had made plans based on their assumptions of the inheritance? Not a home. Play stupid homophobic games. Win stupid homophobic prizes. Even if John's parents were decent people, Opie spent a decade caring for them. It deserves whatever she felt was right to give her which in this case I agree with. She gave her 20s to them and was with them until the end. That is far more than John's mother can say she did for them in the last 10 years. Not stay home. The grandparents wanted you to have the money. They deliberately gave their daughter 50,000 so that she can sue you. They were smart old people. I wouldn't be surprised if they knew about John's sexuality all along. Never underestimate people just because they are old. Honestly, I think they did know but never mentioned it. It seems likely his parents told them or word somehow got out. Sometimes people just know. There were likely obvious clues that even you and your ex couldn't hide. The best kind of people will treat people with kindness no matter what they think about their life choices. I know my ultra-religious grandparents were not thrilled with my wife and I living together before we married, but never complained to us about it. It's likely his grandparents just wanted him to be safe and happy, no matter who he really loved. Not stay home. You took care of them and had no career because of all the unpaid work that you did. I don't know why you gave your ex some money, but that's your decision. He had supported me when I was facing homelessness and married me in part to make sure I would be taken care of. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for an inviting my sister-in-law to my wedding for her trashy behavior? Me, female 24, and my fiancé, 28 male, are getting married in two months. His sister, 30 female, is nice enough, but I've always gotten the sense she doesn't like me. She's never been rude, but she just seems uninterested in me. Even so, when our families get together, her and her boyfriend are personable enough. I come from scholars and they don't, so my family liked that she's a nurse. Or so we thought. My cousins, both 34 male, came to town for a visit last week and said they were going to go out that night and they wouldn't be back till way late. They ended up coming back super early. And when we ask, me and my parents and my fiancé, what happened? Turned out they got kicked out of a strip club for taking a picture of a dancer. And it was my fiancé's sister. I was mortified because I never took her for her type. We told fiancé's parents and it was a huge thing. Lots of drama between her and their parents. Eventually, everything calmed down and it became, she's an adult, it's none of our business. This really rubbed me the wrong way, and I told fiancé that I was no longer comfortable with her coming to the wedding. I was met with a lot of resistance, but eventually he agreed. When I called her to explain myself, she blew up at me and told me I was shaming her for something that didn't affect me. 
I told her it did affect me if she would be bringing a trashy atmosphere to my wedding. We come from money and the last thing I want is men lining up for services outside a broom closet. And I told her that much. She said she was offended that I suddenly think of her that way. But I told her she was more suited to a bachelor's party than a wedding. And I hung up. Well, ever since then, their family has been telling me how much of a witch I am for telling her what they want. And now my fiancé is starting to say I should reconsider. But I don't think bringing a stripper to a wedding is appropriate. Now for the comments. I come from scholars and they don't. You're the a-hole just for that statement. Are you going to ban your trashy cousins who went to the strip club as well? They'd probably be the first in line for her services should she decide to offer. What the heck does I come from scholars even mean? Does this brain surgeon know that one, education does not equal intelligence? And two, even if it did, intelligence is not always hereditary. And smart people have dumb kids all the time. Info. Where does the sister exhibit trashy behavior in this story? The only one acting trashy is you. And the cousins who violated her privacy by taking a picture. You're the a-hole. I'm missing exactly where your sister-in-law exhibited trashy behavior. She has a job she keeps private. Period. You literally had no idea until your family started to creepily sneak pictures of her while they were out drinking and carrying on. Your sister-in-law may work at a club, but your family was kicked out of the same place for being classless and out of line. They were literally too trashy for the atmosphere you're complaining about. But then you decided to dip yourself further into the dumpster fire of trash that is your family by blasting an adult's business to her parents as if she's a little kid caught skipping school. Was the tattletale nonsense necessary about something that's clearly zip all of your business? And again, while your sister-in-law is busily doing nothing offensive, you're worried your family and friends are so completely trashy themselves that they'll be lining up at a wedding, no less, for services no one has even offered like a pack of crazed animals. What kind of people are you related to that this is going to be a problem? I don't know what kind of scholars you've got hanging around, but I have literally never, ever, ever, ever had to worry my family or friends are going to sexually assault other people in mass. You're the a-hole. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for letting my daughter wear a tiara at my cousin's wedding? My 32 female daughter Chloe, for female, has a fascination with princesses. She loves the color pink, wears only dresses, It has an array of tiaras she wears everywhere except at preschool where she can't, but she does have it in her backpack. My cousin, 33 male Alex, fake names, invited us to his wedding, which was this past Saturday. Chloe was excited because she got to dress up and stay dressed up the entire time. She also couldn't wait to see the bride's dress. She asked if she could wear her princess tiara, and I said of course. We got to the wedding on time. However, the start time was delayed for unknown reasons. Fifteen minutes after it was supposed to start, one of the bridesmaids came out and told me that the bride Jen, 31 female, was refusing to come out because my daughter was wearing a tiara. I thought she was joking, but she wasn't. Apparently, the bride was also wearing a tiara and wanted to be the only one wearing it. I told the bridesmaid that Chloe loves tiaras and always wears them. The bridesmaid said, not today, she isn't, and told me it needed to be removed. I said no, but the bride is a grown woman and was being petty over a child's tiara. The bridesmaid left for a couple minutes and then Alex himself came out. He told me to leave. I asked why, and he said because I won't tell Chloe to take off her tiara. I said this was ridiculous, but Alex said it's not my wedding. And when I get married, then Chloe can wear one to mine. With that, I'm officially uninvited regardless. Others around me told me to just take it off, and I wouldn't. Alex's mom came over and escorted us out. Chloe was upset and crying because she feels she did something wrong. And I'm upset because I can't believe someone would be jealous over a literal four-year-old. I also feel bad because Chloe was really looking forward to seeing Jen's dress because she loves wedding dresses. But literally, no one is on my side. Am I the a-hole? Edit. Someone asked if my cousin has a mental illness. I said no, but the bride has aspergers, and they said that's important for you all to know. You seriously need to parent up and teach your kid that there is a time and place for indulging your inner princess. And a time and place for sitting back, 
following dress codes and letting other people shine. For example, at their own goddamn weddings. You were asked nicely, but were petulant and entitled. You caused this. It's not over a child. It's over your lack of parenting. There's a reason nobody's on your side. You're the a-hole. I agree with this. Four-year-old should be taught time and place for attire. She didn't wear a tiara to preschool as mentioned by the OP, so a wedding is also a specific occasion. I personally would find it cute if I were the bride, but everyone is different, I guess. I think the bride's wishes, while over the top here, should be respected. Yeah, wedding conventions are stupid, so it's a frequent gray area here. But no one's saying Opie's an a-hole for thinking the bride is being extra. She's an a-hole for digging in her heels for no good reason, refusing to teach her daughter an age-appropriate lesson about etiquette, and ruining her daughter's day on top of upsetting the bride. I bet they were quick to yeet her because stuff like this is part of a larger pattern. You're the a-hole for not complying with the bride's request slash demand. It is their wedding and their rules. There is a reason literally no one is on my side in this. Because you were wrong. Ruined her daughter's opportunity to enjoy herself, and for what? The kid would have gotten over the removal of her tiara in minutes. So much more upsetting to have to leave the wedding and not get to do the thing she was actually looking forward to, which was admiring the bride. Nobody told Opie that pick your battles doesn't mean pick every battle. Not only that, but the daughter at four years old had a social graces thought to ask her mom before the wedding if it was okay to wear it. How hard is it to say, Oh honey, I'm sorry. I thought it would be alright, but mommy made a mistake. And bride would like you to take it off. Like how you don't wear it at preschool. You can have it with you, but let's not wear it right now. Sorry, but you're the a-hole. Yes, it was absolutely over-the-top idiotic for the bride to obsess over a four-year-old wearing a tiara. But once she told you to take it off, you should have removed it. She's the bride, it's her party, she makes the rules. Yes, your daughter would have been disappointed to take it off. But I guess she was even more disappointed to miss the whole event. 